congregation under the heaven that was then known. And, and, and they're all there in Jerusalem for the Passover. And all of a sudden they see these Galileans coming out of this room. Uh, they come out of this house. And they're out in the streets and they're dancing. And they're staggering around. Hallelujah. And, and they're speaking in, in funny languages. And all of a sudden those people begin to recognize they're speaking in our language. And what is this all about? What meaneth this? Why are these? Aren't these all Galileans? How can we speak here and speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God? I mean, there were Medes and Persians. There were there were Cretes. There were all kinds of people that were there, but yet they could hear these Jews, these Gentile, uh, these Jews, amen, that were Galileans speaking in their own languages. Remember, Jesus said, so Thou art Peter. Upon this rock I'll give, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom, Peter. And so Peter, standing up with 11, began to preach. And you know what he said? This is that spoken of by the prophet Joel, Joel 2, 2, 28. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Anybody believe we're in the last days? Anybody believe we're in the last days? You think as things get close to wrapping up? Hell oh, yeah, dude. I know we're there. But guess what? 2,000 years ago, when the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem, amen, Peter said, this is that spoken of by the prophet Joel in the last days. So the last days started 2,000 years ago. So if it started 2,000 years ago, how much closer are we today? And Peter took the keys to the kingdom that God had gave him, and he started the church up. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, oh, this is that. Spoken up by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And they begin to say, well, what do we have to do to receive it? We want that Holy Ghost. We want everything that God's got for us. Listen, friend, the reason you're here today is because God's got a plan that you can come into his presence and remain in his presence. Hallelujah. You don't just have to have a conjugal visit. Amen. With Jesus, you don't have to come in for a for a, a little a lovey dovey session with Jesus and go home. Amen. You can walk into His presence and stay there the rest of your life. Yes. Woo, hallelujah. Well, how do I do that? Peter said in Acts chapter two, verse thirty-eight. Oh, come on. This is a candy stick apostolic. So, repent and be baptized, every one of you. You can't receive the Holy Ghost without repentance. And you can't receive the Holy Ghost without baptism. Amen. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you got to be baptized in the water and the Spirit. Hallelujah. He didn't, he didn't make a distinction. He said of the water and the Spirit. So you have to have both a baptism of water and a baptism of spirit. Hallelujah. Or you can't see the kingdom of God. Well, how do I get baptized in the Holy Ghost? Oh, you've got to repent. Repentance means turning about face and walking away from sin and walking towards God. Making up your mind. Oh, they won't like that. Making up your mind that you're no longer going to be a sinner. Making up your mind, amen, that there's nothing this world has that is worth dying for. Amen. But there's one God, amen, who is above all who's through all and who's in you all. He wants to come and fill you with his spirit. Hallelujah. He wants to step into your life. He wants to make a difference. He, when you come to the presence of the king this morning, he wants to change you and rearrange you. He wants you to leave a different way from what you came. So he said, repent. Turn aside from your sin. Walk away from it. Walk toward him. And be baptized, every one of you. How? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yep. What's the name of the Father? Jesus said, you see me, you see the Father. I and the Father are one. He said, I'm coming in my Father's name. How many more scriptures do you need? There's a bunch of them in there. What about Isaiah 9 and 6? Prophecy concerning Jesus. She shall bring forth a child. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting What? Father. 
Hallelujah, speaking of Jesus. Uh, amen. So uh, Jesus, when he said to Philip, you see me, you see the Father. He wasn't making up. Amen. He was just saying, hey, I'm the only visibility you'll ever see of, of the Father. Why? Because God is a spirit. No man's ever seen God at any time. There have been different forms that God has presented himself in across the years, but nobody's ever really seen God. You can't see him because he's a spirit. So then what is Jesus? The Bible said Jesus is the express image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. He said he created himself in our image. Hallelujah. Why? Because he wanted to be able to come and relate to mankind. He had to make a supreme sacrifice. So he made himself a body. And, and, oh, you don't believe it. But the word of God said all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Jesus bodily. The Bible referred to Jesus as the one that created the world. Hallelujah. So if Jesus is the name of the Father, we already know it's the name of the Son. What about the Spirit? And the Spirit, Jesus said, which the Father shall send, how? In my name. Whose name? Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So guess what? Amen. That same God that was in spirit, amen, has created a body and, and filled that body. Oh, now here's the clincher. Listen to this. He said, if this same spirit dwell in you, which dwelt in Christ Jesus, you mean I can have that same spirit that dwelt in Jesus himself? Yes, sir. That same spirit can dwell in you. What is that spirit? It's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What was dwelling in Jesus was the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you something. And he said, be baptized. How? In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So there is a little protocol when you come into his presence. Oh, listen. David said it this way, come into his presence with singing. Hallelujah. That's why we come in here and we lift our hands and we worship him. That's why we sing the song of Zion. That's why we give him glory because we're in the presence of the king and he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Mephibosheth, you might look kind of ragtag. And the king said, well, I've already given you all this stuff. But I like what Mephibosheth said. I'm just glad I'm in your presence. You can keep the junk. Hallelujah. You can give it to whoever. You can do whatever you want to with the junk because it's not about the junk. It's about being in the presence of the king. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, listen. This world is not my home. You can keep this world and this stuff. You can take it and sell it all. It doesn't make any difference to me. The government can seize everything I've got. They won't get much. Oh, but I want you to understand I haven't got myself all wrapped up in this junk. Amen. I can give it all up at a moment's notice simply because of the fact that I'm in the presence of the king. Brother, Brother West, I'm in his presence and in his presence there's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. That's why I'm happy. That's why I can sing when there's turmoil. That's why I can whistle. Amen. When I'm at work and there's stuff going on. It's simply because of the fact that there's a joy that comes in when the Holy Ghost fills you. Come to the piano. You see, there's nothing. There's nothing like being in the presence of the king. It's not about the stuff. You know, I'm not here because of what he can give me. There's some people that when Jesus was walking this earth, the only reason they came into his presence was so that he could give them something. They were there for the loaves and fishes. But when it came down to the end of it all, 
They were the same ones that were shaking their fists saying, crucify him, crucify him. They were the religious right of that world. Let me tell you something.